Luke chapter 1 The conception of John the Baptist and of Christ The visitation and canticle of the Blessed Virgin The birth of the Baptist And the canticle of Zachary Forasmuch as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a narration of the things that have been accomplished among us, according as they have delivered them unto us, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having diligently attained to all things from the beginning, to write to thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mayest know the verity of those words in which thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zachary, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Footnote. Of the course of Abia, that is, of the rank of Abia, which word in the Greek is commonly put for the employment of one day, but here for the functions of a whole week. For by the appointment of David, the first book of Paralipomenon, chapter 24, the descendants from Aaron were divided into twenty-four families, of which the eighth was Abia, from whom descended this Zachary, who at this time was in the week of his priestly functions. End of footnote. And they were both just before God, walking in all the commandments and justifications of the Lord without blame. And they had no son, for that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well advanced in years. And it came to pass, when he executed the priestly function in the order of his course before God, according to the custom of the priestly office, it was his lot to offer incense going into the temple of the Lord. And all the multitude of the people were praying without at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zachary, seeing him, was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Fear not, Zachary, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice in his nativity. For he shall be great before the Lord, and shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And he shall convert many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the Spirit and power of Elias, that he may turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children, and the incredulous to the wisdom of the just, to prepare unto the Lord a perfect people. And Zachary said to the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel, who stand before God, and am sent to speak to thee, and to bring thee these good tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be able to speak, until the day wherein these things shall come to pass, because thou hast not believed my words, which shall be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zachary, and they wondered that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they understood that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he made signs to them, and remained dumb. And it came to pass, after the days of his office were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days Elizabeth his wife conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he hath had regard to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, called Nazareth, 
to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel being come in, said unto her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Who having heard was troubled at his saying, and thought with herself what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David his father, and he shall reign in the house of Jacob for ever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be done, because I know not man? And the angel answering said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, and therefore also the Holy which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth she also hath conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her that is called barren, because no word shall be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary, rising up in those days, went into the hill country with haste, into the city of Judah. And she entered into the house of Zachary, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she cried out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed art thou that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Footnote, shall call me blessed. These words were a prediction of that honour which the church in all ages should pay to the Blessed Virgin. Let Protestants examine whether they are any way concerned in this prophecy. End of footnote. Because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. He hath showed might in his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath received Israel his servant, being mindful of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and she returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time of being delivered was come, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolks heard that the Lord had showed his great mercy towards her, and they congratulated with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him by his father's name Zachary. And his mother answering said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, 
how he would have him called, and demanding a writing table he wrote, saying, John is his name, and they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these things were noised abroad over all the hill country of Judea. And all they that had heard them laid them up in their heart, saying, What and one think ye shall this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And Zachary his father was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he hath visited and wrought the redemption of his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation to us in the house of David his servant. Footnote, horn of salvation, that is, a powerful salvation, as Dr. Witham translates it. For in the scripture, by horn is generally understood strength and power. End of footnote. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who are from the beginning, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy testament, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father that he would grant to us, that being delivered from the hand of our enemies we may serve him without fear in holiness and justice before him all our days. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people unto the remission of their sins, through the bowels of the mercy of our God, in which the Orient from on high hath visited us. Footnote, the Orient. It is one of the titles of the Messiah, the true light of the world, and the Son of Justice. End of footnote. To enlighten them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and was strengthened in spirit, and was in the deserts until the day of his manifestation to Israel. Luke chapter 2 The birth of Christ, his presentation in the temple, Simeon's prophecy, Christ at twelve years of age, is found amongst the doctors. And it came to pass that in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This enrolling was first made by Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his espoused wife who was with child. And it came to pass that when they were there, her days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Footnote. Her firstborn. The meaning is not that she had afterward any other child but it is a way of speech among the Hebrews to call them also the firstborn, who are the only children. See annotation Matthew chapter 1 verse 25 and a footnote. And there were in the same country shepherds watching and keeping the night watches over their flock. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the brightness of God shone round about them, and they feared with a great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all the people. For this day is born to you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, in the city of David. 
and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of good will. And it came to pass, after the angels departed from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem, and let us see this word that is come to pass, which the Lord hath showed to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the infant lying in the manger. And seeing, they understood the word that had been spoken to them concerning this child. And all that heard wondered, and at those things that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these words, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And after eight days were accomplished, that the child should be circumcised, his name was called Jesus, which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And after the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they carried him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male opening the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according as it is written in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was in him. And he had received an answer from the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when his parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he also took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now thou dost dismiss thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word in peace, because my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all peoples a light to the revelation of the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And his father and mother were wondering at those things which were spoken concerning him. And Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall, and for the resurrection of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be contradicted. Footnote. For the fall, etc. Christ came for the salvation of all men, but here Simeon prophesies what would come to pass, that many through their own willful blindness and obstinacy would not believe in Christ, nor receive his doctrine, which therefore would be ruin to them, but to others a resurrection, by their believing in him and obeying his commandments. And a footnote, and thy own soul a sword shall pierce that out of many hearts thoughts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was far advanced in years, and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow until fourscore and four years, who departed not from the temple, by fastings and prayers serving night and day. Now she, at the same hour coming in, confessed to the Lord, and spoke of him to all that looked for the redemption of Israel. And after they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their city of Nazareth, and the child grew and waxed strong, full of wisdom, and the grace of God was in him. And 
His parents went every year to Jerusalem at the solemn day of the Pasch. And when he was twelve years old, they, going up into Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast, and having fulfilled the days when they returned, the child Jesus remained in Jerusalem, and his parents knew it not. And thinking that he was in the company, they came a day's journey, and sought him among their kinsfolks and acquaintance. And not finding him, they returned into Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his wisdom and his answers. And seeing him they wondered. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the word that he spoke unto them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these words in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and grace with God and men. Luke chapter 3 John's mission and preaching, Christ is baptized by him. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and Philip his brother, tetrarch of Etruria, and the country of Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilina under the high priests Anna and Caiaphas. The word of the Lord was made unto John, the son of Zachary, in the desert. And he came into all the country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins, as it was written in the book of the sayings of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said therefore to the multitudes that went forth to be baptized by him, Ye offspring of vipers, who hath shewed you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of penance, and do not begin to say, We have Abraham for our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. For now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, what then shall we do? And he answering said to them, He that hath two coats, let him give to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do in like manner. And the publicans also came to be baptized, and said to him, Master, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do nothing more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers also asked him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said to them, Do violence to no man, neither calumniate any man, and be content with your pay. And as the people were of opinion, and all were thinking in their hearts of John, that perhaps he might be the Christ, John answered, saying unto all, I indeed baptize you with water, but there shall come one mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And many other things exhorting did he preach to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, 
when he was reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. He added this also above all, and shut up John in prison. Now it came to pass, when all the people were baptized, that Jesus also being baptized and praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape as a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself was beginning about the age of thirty years, being, as it was supposed, the son of Joseph, who was of Heli, who was of Mathat. Who was of Heli? St. Joseph, who by nature was the son of Jacob, see St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, in the account of the law, was son of Heli, for Heli and Jacob were brothers by the same mother, and Heli, who was the elder, dying without issue, Jacob, as the law directed, married his widow. In consequence of such marriage, his son Joseph was reputed in the law the son of Heli. End of footnote. Who was of Levi, who was of Melchi, who was of Jane, who was of Joseph, who was of Mathathias, who was of Amos, who was of Nahum, who was of Hesli, who was of Nage, who was of Mahath, who was of Mathathias, who was of Semai, who was of Joseph, who was of Judah, who was of Joanna, who was of Reza, who was of Zerubbabel, who was of Salathiel, who was of Neri, who was of Melchi, who was of Adi, who was of Kosan, who was of Helmadan, who was of Hur, who was of Jesus, who was of Eliza, who was of Jorim, who was of Mathat, who was of Levi, who was of Simeon, who was of Judas, who was of Joseph, who was of Jonah, who was of Eliakim, who was of Melia, who was of Mena, who was of Mathatha, who was of Nathan, who was of David, who was of Jesse, who was of Obed, who was of Boaz, who was of Salmon, who was of Naason, who was of Aminadab, who was of Aram, who was of Asran, who was of Phares, who was of Judas, who was of Jacob, who was of Isaac, who was of Abraham, who was of Ther, who was of Nakor, who was of Sarug, who was of Ragau, who was of Phaleg, who was of Heber, who was of Saleh, who was of Canaan, who was of who was of Arphaxad, who was of Sem, who was of Noah, who was of Lamech, who was of Methuselah, who was of Henoch, who was of Jared, who was of Malaliel, who was of Canaan, who was of Hinas, who was of Seth, who was of Adam, who was of God. Luke chapter 4 Christ's Fasting and Temptation he is persecuted in Nazareth, his miracles in Capharnaum. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the desert for the space of forty days, and was tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if thou be the Son of God, say to this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, Is written that man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word of God? And the devil led him into a high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, to thee will I give all this power and glory of them. For to me they are delivered, and to whom I will I give them. If thou therefore wilt adore before me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answering said to him, It is written, Thou shalt adore the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. 
And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself from hence. For it is written that he hath given his angels a charge over thee, that they keep thee, and that in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest perhaps thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said to him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And all the temptation being ended, the devil departed from him for a time. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and the fame of him went out through the whole country. And he taught in their synagogues, and was magnified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he was brought up. And he went into the synagogue, according to his custom on the Sabbath day, and he rose up to read. And the book of Isaiah the prophet was delivered unto him. And as he unfolded the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Wherefore he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the contrite of heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of reward. And when he had folded the book, he restored it to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, This day is fulfilled this scripture in your ears. And all gave testimony to him. And they wondered at the words of grace that proceeded from his mouth, and they said, Is not this the son of Joseph? And he said to them, Doubtless you will say to me this similitude, Physician, heal thyself. As great things as we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy own country. And he said, Amen, I say to you that no prophet is accepted in his own country. In truth I say to you, there were many widows in the days of Elias in Israel, when heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there was a great famine throughout all the earth. And to none of them was Elias sent, but to Sarepta of Sidon, to a widow woman. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisius the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, but Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, hearing these things, were filled with anger. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they brought him to the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And he went down into Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and there he taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his speech was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man who had an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and go out of him. And when the devil had thrown him into the midst, he went out of him, and hurt him not at all. And there came fear upon all, and they talked among themselves, saying, What word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they go out. And the fame of him was published in every place of the country. And Jesus, rising up out of the synagogue, went into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And standing over her, he commanded the fever, and it left her. And immediately rising, she ministered to them. And when the sun was down, 
All they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them to him. But he, laying his hands on every one of them, healed them. And devils went out from many, crying out and saying, Thou art the Son of God. And rebuking them, he suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, going out, he went into a desert place, and the multitudes sought him, and came unto him, and they stayed him that should not depart from them, to whom he said, To other cities also I must preach the kingdom of God, for therefore am I sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Luke chapter 5 The Miraculous Draft of Fishes The Cure of the Leper and of the Paralytic The Call of Matthew And it came to pass that when the multitudes pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genazareth, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And going into one of the ships, that was Simon's, he desired him to draw back a little from the land, and sitting he taught the multitudes out of the ship. Now when he had ceased to speak, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said to him, Master, we have labored all the night, and have taken nothing, but at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a very great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. And they beckoned to their partners that were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they were almost sinking. Which when Simon Peter saw, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was wholly astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so were also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. And Jesus saith to Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And having brought their ships to land, leaving all things, they followed him. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, and falling on his face, besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And stretching forth his hand, he touched him, saying, I will be thou cleansed. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him that he should tell no man, but go show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But the fame of him went abroad the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him in their infirmities. And he retired into the desert and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he sat teaching, that there were also Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, that were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man who had the palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up upon the roof and let him down through the tiles with his bed into the midst before Jesus, whose faith when he saw, he said, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and Pharisees began to think, saying, Who is this who speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus knew their thoughts, answering, he said to them, What is it you think in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man hath the power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, 
I say to thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. And immediately rising up before them, he took up the bed on which he lay, and he went away to his own house, glorifying God. And all were astonished, and they glorified God, and they were filled with fear, saying, We have seen wonderful things today. And after these things he went forth, and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said to him, Follow me. And leaving all things, he rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that were at table with them. But the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said to them, They that are whole need not the physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the just, but sinners to penance. And they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and break prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees in like manner? But thine eat and drink. To whom he said, Can you make the children of the bridegroom fast, whilst the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Then shall they fast in those days. And he spoke also a similitude to them, that no man putteth a piece from a new garment upon an old garment, otherwise he both rendeth the new, and the piece taken from the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, otherwise the new wine will break the bottles, and it will be spilt, and the bottles will be lost. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. And no man drinking old hath presently a mind to new, for he saith, The old is better. Luke chapter 6 Christ excuses his disciples. He cures upon the Sabbath day chooses the twelve, and makes a sermon to them. And it came to pass on the second first Sabbath, that as he went through the cornfields his disciples plucked the ears and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. Footnote. The second first Sabbath. Some understand this of the Sabbath of Pentecost, which was the second in course among the great feasts, others of a Sabbath day that immediately followed any solemn feast. And, a footnote. and some of the Pharisees said to them, Why do you that which is not lawful on the Sabbath days? And Jesus answering them said, Have you not read so much as this, what David did, when himself was hungry, and they that were with him. How he went into the house of God, and took and ate the bread of proposition, and gave to them that were with him, which is not lawful to eat, but only for the priests. And he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath, that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched if he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man who had the withered hand, Arise, and stand forth in the midst. And rising he stood forth. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, if it be lawful on the Sabbath days, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy. And looking round about on them all, he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and his hand was restored. And they were filled with madness, and they talked one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and he passed the whole night in the prayer of God. And when day was come, he called unto him his disciples, and he chose twelve of them, 
whom also he named apostles, Simon, whom he surnamed Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who is called Zealots, and Jude the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, who was the traitor. And coming down with them, he stood in a plain place, and the company of his disciples, and a very great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem, and the sea coast, both of Tyre and Sidon, who were come to hear him, and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the multitude sought to touch him, for virtue went out from him and healed all. And he, lifting up his eyes on his disciples, said, Blessed are ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Be glad in that day, and rejoice, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for according to these things did their fathers to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have your consolation. Woe to you that are filled, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that now laugh, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when men shall bless you, for according to these things did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say to you that here love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that calumniate you. And to him that striketh thee on the one cheek offer also the other. And him that taketh away from thee thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every one that asketh thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them in like manner. And if you love them that love you, what thanks are to you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them who do good to you, what thanks are to you? For sinners also do this. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thanks are to you? For sinners also lend to sinners for to receive as much but love ye your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing thereby, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the sons of the highest, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, and pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall they give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you shall meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And he spoke also to them a similitude. Can the blind lead the blind? Do they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one shall be perfect if he be as his master. And why seest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, but the beam that is in thy own eye thou considerest not? Or how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull the moat out of thy eye, when thou thyself seest not the beam in thy own eye. Hypocrite, cast first the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to take out the moat from thy brother's eye. For there is no good tree that bringeth forth evil fruit, nor an evil tree that bringeth forth good fruit. 
for every tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor from a bramble bush do they gather the grape. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Every one that cometh to me and heareth my word and doth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who digged deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when a flood came, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and it could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. But he that heareth and doth not is like to a man building his house upon the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Luke chapter 7 Christ heals the centurion's servant, he raises the widow's son to life, answers the messenger sent by John, and absolves the penitent sinner. And when he had finished all his words in the hearing of the people, he entered into Capharnaum. And the servant of a certain centurion, who was dear to him, being sick, was ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the ancients of the Jews, desiring him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him earnestly, saying to him, He is worthy that thou shouldst do this for him. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. And Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him, saying, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. For which cause neither did I think myself worthy to come to thee, but say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man subject to authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doth it. Which Jesus hearing marveled, and turning about to the multitude that followed him, he said, Amen, I say to you, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. And they who were sent, being returned to the house, found the servant whole who had been sick. And it came to pass afterwards that he went into a city that is called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow and a great multitude of the city was with her, whom, when the Lord had seen, being moved with mercy toward her, he said to her, Weep not. And he came near and touched the bier, and they that carried it stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. And there came a fear upon them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is risen up among us, and God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the country round about. And John's disciples told him of all these things. And John called to him two of his disciples, and sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? And when the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist hath sent us to thee, saying, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? 
and in that same hour he cured many of their diseases and hurts and evil spirits, and to many that were blind he gave sight. And answering he said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are made clean, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be scandalized in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak to the multitudes concerning John. What went ye out into the desert to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Behold, they that are in costly apparel, and live delicately, are in the houses of kings. But what went you out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say to you, and more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my angel before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say to you, Amongst those that are born of men, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is the lesser in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people hearing and the publicans justified God being baptized with John's baptism. Footnote. Justified God. That is, praised the justice of God, fear and worshipped God as just and merciful. End of footnote. But the Pharisees and the lawyers despised the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized by him. And the Lord said, Where unto you, then, shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like to children sitting in the marketplace, and speaking one to another, and saying, We have piped to you, and you have not danced. We have mourned, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a man that is a glutton and a drinker of wine, a friend of publicans and sinners. And wisdom is justified by all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him to eat with him. And he went into the house of the Pharisee and sat down to meet footnote one of the pharisees that is simon end of footnote and behold a woman that was in the city a sinner when she knew that he sat at meat in the pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of ointment and standing behind at his feet she began to wash his feet with tears and wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment and the pharisee who had invited him seeing it spoke within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would know surely who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him that she is a sinner and Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. But he said, Master, say it. A certain creditor had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And whereas they had not wherewith to pay, he forgave them both. Which therefore of the two lovest him most? Simon answering said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said to him, Thou hast judged rightly. And turning to the woman, he said unto Simon, Dost thou see this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she with tears hath washed my feet, and with her hairs hath wiped them. Thou gavest me no kiss, but she, since she came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but she with ointment hath anointed my feet. Wherefore I say to thee, many sins are forgiven her, 
because she hath loved much. But to whom less is forgiven, he loveth less. Footnote. Many sins are forgiven her, because she hath loved much. In the scripture, an effect sometimes seems attributed to one only cause, when there are diverse other concurring dispositions. For the sins of this woman in this verse are said to be forgiven because she loved much. But, verse 50, Christ tells her, Thy faith hath made thee safe. Hence, in a true conversion, are joined faith, hope, love, sorrow for sin, and other pious dispositions. End of footnote. And he said to her, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath made thee safe. Go in peace. Luke chapter 8 The parable of the seed Christ stills the storm at sea, casts out the legion, heals the issue of blood, and raises the daughter of Jairus to life. And it came to pass, afterwards he traveled through the cities and towns, preaching and evangelizing the kingdom of God, and the twelve with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary who is called Magdalene, out of whom seven devils were gone forth, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who ministered unto him of their substance. And when a very great multitude was gathered together, and hastened out of the cities unto him, he spoke by a similitude. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and other some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it had no moisture, and other some fell among thorns, and the thorns growing up with it choked it, and other some fell upon good ground, and being sprung up, yielded fruit a hundredfold. Saying these things, he cried out, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him what this parable might be, to whom he said, To you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing may not understand. Footnote. Seeing they may not see. See the annotation, Mark Chapter 4, verse 12. End of footnote. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And they by the wayside are they that hear. Then the devil cometh and taketh the word out of their heart, lest believing they should be saved. Now they upon the rock are they who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no roots, for they believe for a while, and in time of temptation they fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they who have heard, and going their way are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and yield no fruit. But that on the good ground are they who, in a good and perfect heart, hearing the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit in patience. Now no man lighting a candle covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it upon a candlestick, that they who come in may see the light. For there is not anything secret that shall not be made manifest, nor hidden that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how you hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, that also which he thinketh he hath, shall be taken away from him. And his mother and brethren 
came unto him, and they could not come at him for the crowd. And it was told him, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. Who answering said to them, My mother and my brethren are they who hear the word of God and do it. And it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a little ship with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And when they were sailing, he slept, and there came down a storm of wind upon the lake, and they were filled and were in danger. And they came and awaked him, saying, Master, we perish. But he arising rebuked the wind and the rage of the water, and it ceased, and there was a calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? Who, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, Who is this, think you, that he commandeth both the winds and the sea? And they obey him. And they sailed to the country of the Gerasens, which is over against Galilee. And when he was come forth to the land, there met him a certain man who had a devil now a very long time, and he wore no clothes, neither did he abide in a house but in the sepulchres. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down before him, and crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beseech thee, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirits to go out of the man. For many times it seized him, and he was bound with chains, and kept in fetters, and breaking the bonds, he was driven by the devil into the deserts. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? But he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. The devils therefore went out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake, and were stifled. Which, when they that fed them saw done, they fled away, and told it in the city and in the villages. And they went out to see what was done. And they came to Jesus, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at his feet, clothed, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they also that had seen told them how he had been healed from the legion and all the multitude of the country of the Gerasens besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he, going up into the ship, returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thy house, and tell how great things God hath done to thee and he went through the whole city publishing how great things jesus had done to him and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the multitude received him for they were all waiting for him and behold there came a man whose name was jairus and he was a ruler of the synagogue and he fell down at the feet of jesus beseeching him that he would come into his house for he had an only daughter, almost twelve years old, and she was dying. And it happened, as he went, that he was thronged by the multitudes. And there was a certain woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, who had bestowed all her substance on physicians, and could not be healed by any. She came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment and immediately the issue of her blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who is it that touched me? And all denying, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng 
and press thee, and dost thou say, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I know that virtue is gone out from me. And the woman, seeing that she was not hid, came trembling and fell down before his feet, and declared before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was immediately healed. But he said to her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, go thy way in peace. As he was yet speaking, there cometh one to the ruler of the synagogue, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble him not. And Jesus, hearing this word, answered the father of the maid, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be safe. And when he was come to the house, he suffered not any man to go in with him, but Peter and James and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and mourned for her. But he said, Weep not, the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. But he, taking her by the hand, cried out, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he bid them give her to eat. And her parents were astonished, whom he charged to tell no man what was done. Luke chapter 9 Christ sends forth his apostles, feeds five thousand with five loaves, is transfigured and casts out a devil. Then, calling together the twelve apostles, he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor scrip, nor bread, nor money, neither have two coats. And whatsoever house you shall enter into, abide there, and depart not from thence. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off even the dust of your feet for a testimony against them. And going out, they went about through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all things that were done by him, and he was in a doubt, because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, but by other some that Elias had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done. And taking them, he went aside into a desert place apart, which belongeth to Bethsaida, which when the people knew, they followed him. And he received them, and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and healed them who had need of healing. Now the day began to decline, and the twelve came and said to him, Send away the multitude, that, going into the towns and villages round about, they may lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. But he said to them, Give you them to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless perhaps we should go and buy food for all this multitude. Now there were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit down by fifties in a company. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves, and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed them, and he broke and distributed to his disciples to set before the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they were taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples also were with him, 
And he asked them, saying, Whom do the people say that I am? But they answered and said, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say that one of the former prophets is risen again. And he said to them, But whom do you say that I am? Simon Peter answering said, The Christ of God. But he strictly charging them, commanded they should tell this to no man, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the ancients, and chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day rise again. And he said to all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. For he that shall lose his life for my sake shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world, and lose himself, and cast away himself? For he that shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him the Son of Man shall be ashamed, when he shall come in his majesty and that of his Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there are some standing here that shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass, about eight days after these words, that he took Peter and James and John, and went up into a mountain to pray. And whilst he prayed, the shape of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became white and glittering. And behold, two men were talking with him, and they were Moses and Elias, appearing in majesty, and they spoke of his decrease that he should accomplish in Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and waking they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass that as they were departing from him, Peter saith to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. And as he spoke these things, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them. And they were afraid when they entered into the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And whilst the voice was uttered, Jesus was found alone. And they held their peace, and told no man in those days any of these things which they had seen. And it came to pass the day following, when they came down from the mountain, there met him a great multitude. And behold, a man among the crowd cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, because he is my only one. And lo, a spirit seizeth him, and he suddenly crieth out, and he throweth him down, and teareth him, so that he foameth, and bruising him he hardly departeth from him. And I desired thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring hither thy son. And as he was coming to him, the devil threw him down and tore him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, and cured the boy, and restored him to his father. And all were astonished at the mighty power of God. But while all wondered at all the things he did, he said to his disciples, Lay you up in your hearts these words, for it shall come to pass that the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this word, and it was hid from them, so that they perceived it not, and they were afraid to ask him concerning this word. And there entered a thought into them, which of them should be greater. But Jesus, seeing the thoughts of their hearts, took a child and set him by him, 
and said to them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is the lesser among you all, he is the greater. And John answering said, Master, we saw a certain man casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said to him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against you is for you. And it came to pass, when the days of his assumption were accomplishing, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent his messengers before his face, and going they entered into the city of the Samaritans to prepare for him. And they received him not, because his face was of one going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, had seen this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And turning, he rebuked them, saying, You know not of what spirit you are. The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save, and they went into another town. And it came to pass, as they walked in the way, that a certain man said to him, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. But he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow thee, Lord, but let me first take my leave of them that are at my house. Jesus said to him, No man putting his hand to the plough and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God.